Hey, this is Alexi Cosplay. This video is a lens into how this Dark Souls boss pinwheel is brought to life. I will go through and I'll explain the process and techniques for each piece. There was a lot of trial and error because there's no blueprints or patterns to follow. It's all one of a kind and all handmade. This video is for cosplayers who are looking for inspiration or new ideas. Or for anyone who's interested in pinwheels construction, this video is where I can more concisely explain everything and I won't have to repeat myself. A little background, I've been working on this cosplay for around two years and during those two years I've learned how to sew, 3D print, work with both foam clay and warbla, and work with electronics. Some skills like 3D printing and sewing, I got practice on other cosplays while I put pinwheel on hold. I have just finished a test run of putting everything on and I will be fixing all of the issues within the next upcoming month so I can be ready for Yomacon 2022 Masquerade. This intro has gone on long enough, let's get into the video. Alright, so this is what I've got so far. Let me put this to normal zoom. Sorry, 1.0. Let's get a close up of each mask. So, with this, I started off with like a basic, like, party city, like, white mask. Uh, I had cardboard to it and then some EVA foam. And then finally, I topped it all off with foam clay. Let's see. And then, oh yeah, in the eye holes, I have can't really see it but I took apart like dollar sunglasses and put the lenses in the back of them so if I ever take off any of these masks individually I'll be able to see through them except for the mask of the child that's just fabric back there they're all removable behind right here uh you can't really see it but oh yeah they can they're like all attached with zip ties so they should be pretty tight for the con but when I do want to remove them, it should be pretty easy. I'll be able to just like snip them off. Because later, hopefully, I want to do a giant dad build. There's so many things I don't know what I want to talk about next. I think, I guess I'll just start with the whole of it, like all the paper mache. It's like the base construction. I start off with this one big piece. It started off as a mold of. Um, I did like a body cast to my body, so like I put like the saran wrap around here and then duct tape to make like a, hold on, I have it somewhere. Okay, so I start off with one of these, but then I flipped it upside down. So this was kind of how I started. So I basically, uh, it did stop folding. I essentially, have this part, I would cover it in paper mache and let it dry. I, I would wear it like this. It'd stay more stiff and not like fall over all the time. And that was the base for this. You can still see the armholes right here. Um, so you can see this hole. Um, it's kind of like useless now, but basically that was flipped over to give me some volume to go up. And then on top of that, out of foam, I built a big like triangle part, big like pyramid. I think I have a picture of it. Hopefully I'll put that on screen. And then I put that on top of this. So it was like this and then triangle on top. So when I would put this on to be a big triangle on me, I don't have a photo of that. Um, I, how I put them together was just more paper mache, like I'd paper mache the, like, the joined areas together. Um, do I have, oh, it's right here. And then for the arm pieces, I have a, let me zoom out really quick. This is my bag of all my, like, fabric. I recently got a bunch of, uh, burning done. So to get these, like, edges all weathered I would burn them with a lighter since it's polyester it will just melt okay I'm back that was much more of a pain in the ass to take out and I'm breaking this a little bit but this was completely covered in saran wrap um, it was this like tower thing as you can see it was like really hastily constructed of like floor mats I just needed the shape since it's gonna get paper mache over um, so I had paper mache this whole thing, 
Uh, and then once it's done, I take the paper mache off and then just paper mache this again since I had the saran wrap. I made four of those to be the arms and I connected them to the tri triangle piece. So there's one, there's one, there's one, and there's another one. I didn't have any of the volume in between like here and here or in between these since it's basically just like struts coming out. So what I did was I got some black yarn. Let me grab this. Some yarn. And then I think I have the tool. No, it was like a sculpting tool kind of like this, but. Eh, close enough. Okay. So I would get some yarn. Uh, the piece I was looking for had like a bevel in between and I would put the rope. Um, that rope, the yarn, like this, and I would just puncture the um, paper mache, and basically just like sew, like, like basically like a spider web in between them, and then um, once I had like a few lines done, I'd wrap yarn around. So basically, I had like a little like grid, I guess you could call it, layout in between each of them. And then I'd lay like limp paper mache on top of that with glue. And then once I had like a good base, I'd have smaller pieces of uh, paper mache onto those strips to reinforce it. So I added a lot of volume without adding too much weight. So a lot of this, very hollow, but still pretty strong. Uh, it has a bit of give, which is good, but not so much to where it gets limp. And then it got to be where it was so heavy that um, it was hard to like put on. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, it was so heavy that like, I couldn't really like wear it like this, like these would kind of give way. Um, just because of like how tall it was. It wasn't heavy heavy, like I could lift it with just my pinky if I put my pinky up into here, I could lift the whole thing, like all the cardboard. But I didn't have a good way to hold everything up, so what I did was I got this laundry basket. As you can see, it's just a laundry basket upside down. I put that in there. Um, the top of it kind of touches where the triangle would be, and that supports it. Uh, I cut out the sides from my arms with a knife. Um, so able, and then I cut out some a hole in here for my head to be... I'm going to be looking right here. I'm able to put that on. Uh, everything's still pretty light. The only problem was these sides were really digging into me. So what I did, I should be able to show it on this side. It, it sticks out. I had a lot of scrap material. Um, this green thing is a mix between scrap 3D printed parts. Um, just like from failed prints or like wrong size stuff and then I cut them up with a soldering iron over there into the shape I wanted it and then with EVA foam and then some extra Joanne foam block um, and then extra fabric I made my own like cushions for my shoulders so that even though it wasn't that heavy this like thin plastic with weight just in one spot would dig into my shoulders but now that I have this E6000 all on here. Um, there's also like a slit in here, so like it, it, went, it goes up. It doesn't really move, which is good. Um, so yeah, it's comfortable, it doesn't dig into me. That's the base construction. Oh yeah, the PVC pipes. I have the pipes going down. I had to cut holes in the base to have them go through. And then on the inside, I don't have a better picture, but... They come all the way down in here. Wow, this is pretty cool. And they are zip tied to the laundry basket. Whoa. You can see the other cushion. Uh, what else is there? To get, uh, okay, so a lot of the fabric I have, I wanted to be able to take off just in case if like 
it got dirty or like really smelly or something like that. I wanted to be able to wash it. Um, I just need some base fabric on here to go under the mass. So what I did was I literally sewed um, this in the fabric into the paper mache. And then the areas where I couldn't sew because it was hollow but there was like another layer back here so I couldn't get in there, I would pin it in place and then E6000 it. Um, and then to attach everything, the this part, this is the gown, uh, not gown but like robe, actually I have pictures of me trying it on so, oh and recently I did this to the bottom, the zipper here attaches to this one, so it'll zip in the front. I have a second zipper for the back and then I have buttonholes and buttons for the sides. So the whole like dress and like sleeves where my arms go in is completely removable. And then I have another part, the, all the fabric that covers the, can I zoom out again? There we go. All the fabric that covers the arms is one piece that has a bunch of zippers and no, it has like is it one zipper, I think, maybe one. I have to check. And then a bunch of buttons. Um, that goes around everything and covers all of this up. Uh, but yeah, it's just one like piece that comes on top. Kind of like putting on a jacket, but like with four arms instead of one. Um, that all goes together, and then, oh yeah, the swords. Uh, these things were a fucking pain in the ass. It was my first time using Warbla. Uh, I'm not very good at cutting, so I had to do a lot of sanding to these. So much sanding, you don't, I, I don't even want it. So much sanding. And then I put gesso on it, I think that's how you pronounce it, like 10 layers. And then I had to paint it. And then um, what would happen is uh, when it, they would touch each other and then the paint or like the gesso, the paint would like rub off and like make chips. So I had to repaint it and then seal it. And then they would touch, I actually had them touching again and then the sealant stuck to each other and did the same thing, ripped them off. So I had to repaint this twice already in all the like bad spots. Um, right now, what I still need to do to these is I need to put, I have these holes in here and then I have the holes in this and I need to um, sew this fishing line that I got in between them so that they stay and don't fall off. I don't want them falling off but they rest pretty easily on here. Um, the lantern I 3D printed. I'll get into that later. It's kind of a lot. I'm sawing the swords. Alright, so I got my sword right here i got my dowel inside of it i got my lantern they're gonna go right in this slot with the pvc pipe uh here let me grab one of these i have six of these um usually there would be like fabric right here um to cover this up but it looked kind of weird so i made these on the ends. Uh, I'm gonna try to put this on with one hand. Okay. So this just kind of covers like where the fabric and the sword meet. So it goes on top. So it looks a lot more seamless. And then the lantern will go right here. <laughs> that is why I need the fucking There we go. Much better. It's nearly hitting my 3D printer. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's why I want those tied. Um, ooh. Spooky. But here's the sword. With the lantern that's almost hitting my 3D printer. Um, this, like, angle part right here. I made it so, like... This would be able to like swivel even when it's like attached. Let's see, what else do we have? 
Oh yeah, this necklace. I 3D printed this. Um, yeah, this seems like a good point where I'll start talking about the uh, PLA welding. So all of these were 3D printed individual pieces um, with no like engineering for how to put them together. Uh, actually, I have some extras. Okay, so what I would do is I would get my soldering iron, um, flip these over, heat this up, um, and then I would like heat up the individual pieces and then as filler, I'd use this in kind of like stick welding. It's kind of hard to do with just one hand. Since it's not on, I can, there we go. Holding with my camera, POV. So you move that around. Kind of like that, it'd take forever. It was really annoying. Um, I did that to combine them. And then I needed even more filler. So I would just pretty much get like, like a scrap piece and then just add that as like a backing between them. Um, I can show you on the main piece. Okay, so on the back, you can see, even though it's painted, uh, I have welds in between on each of these. And then this is the really nasty like backing piece. Like I'd put like a bit here to here and then I'd, I'd weld it um, along here along here and then just run it across the top to make it thinner it looks really gross but this isn't for anyone to see mostly just to keep it sturdy you can see i'm whipping around pretty hard it's like big long piece but it stays into place like, look at this i'm holding it from one side Ooh. okay that's enough of that um, that is also how I combined all of these lantern pieces. I would print one of these, like one of this as a panel, six times. Um, I'd print one of, uh, one of these as a piece. I would weld them together. Yeah, on the tops, I got a little um, lazy. I had been doing this. I, I can't even count how many hours I was welding. But these. So these are weld lines. In between each of these pieces is welded. This is welded. This is welded. Um, this, um, I it was really hasty. These are not welded. This seam... For this like top part not welded this is actually foam clay I just put in here uh, I had a hard time I want to be able to get these out because the batteries are inside of here I need to be able to get those out but I'm kind of running out of time so I can't really engineer a way to get them out after I had already finished this like I'm already so late in the development and it was kind of like a last minute idea to make these light up or at least like how I was going to do it But I soldered everything together. Um, I have the pieces. We're gonna get into electronics really quick. Um, I think I have some images, but this is my LED light. Uh, it's powered by eight AA batteries since this is a 12 volt light. I have like, I bought like a little battery holder, I guess. You put eight batteries in the thing. Uh, and then I have that soldered to a switch. And then the light itself. We have some heat shrink in between them. I know in my sample picture, it was like my test one with hot glue. I don't think I took a picture of my finished ones. Um, maybe I'll upload a picture if I ever have to change the batteries. Hopefully I don't. I did try to do some calculations and I have anywhere between three to five hours or a couple days. I don't really know. Oh yeah, this part, this top part. Um, 3D printed this. Oh yeah, I made all the files for these. Um, so I printed this as an individual part, this as an individual part. Soldering iron just like jammed it in between these to make a hole. 
and then I had some like scrap piece and then stuck it in here and then uh, solder these two together so now this will like swivel a lot of the stuff I've done is like I'll print like basic shapes or like some uh, this is the most complex thing I printed but most of the stuff I do is like I'll print like a basic shape and then afterwards I'll take a soldering iron and like scrap pieces to it and I'll make it the shape I want or have the effect I want. I don't really, I try not, I'm pretty like new to printing so like I try not to um, print out stuff that needs to be like engineered. Like I wouldn't print like gears together or anything. I'm not saying that I would for this but I just want to like not have a bunch of wasted prints and like Is there anything more I can say about the mass? I mean, I know I, I did a different wash for this one. This one's green and brown. Um, oh yeah, yeah, my skirt. So, um, this big one, it has a bit of like a mermaid, like a uh, uh, cut. So it's like this, you know, it's like, and it comes in and then it flares out. Um, and then, but like it wouldn't go out at the very bottom, like where my feet are. So I'm making a hoop skirt right here. Let me put this on. Okay, so it's this. I need to adjust it a bit because it's too big and like binds up a bit. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but it should like, what I want is for it to look kind of like Kind of like that, and like, kind of like parachute pants that aren't like gathered together, but like actually get wider. And this will hopefully like lift the other gown I have, like the bottom part as I walk, but still cover my feet, so it doesn't look like there's someone walking under this. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. my arm ones. I have. Yeah, my arm pieces. Okay, so let me get this out. All right, so I flipped this inside out so you guys can see. Um, I printed this part. This is some scrap. Printed out this handle and this base. And then this is a tennis racket grip that I wrapped over it. Uh, some elastic. And then there, there are these uh, like brooch backs that hold it onto the fabric. The fabric's inside out right now, but um, it's gonna go on my, like, like so. And then the sword, let me get a new one. Uh, so this is like the gist, I'll put, ah! I'll put on the whole thing. Okay, that took longer than I wanted. Um, so it looks like this. Rah. And then I'll still have like a sleeve over this, but the sword will look like this. I'll have a lantern on the end of it. I'll be able to carry it. Um, so I want to hold it like this. Um, I don't want to have to like hold the stick like this all day. I, so I got, got the grip so I can hold it like this. Other than that, I think you'll see everything once it's all done. Um, I can see this through here I can like look through the fabric um, I think that's kind of everything I'll probably wear some like light heels I might even wear these shoes I have some shoes for my other cosplay I might just wear those because they're like a small here maybe I'll find like a bigger one so I'm a bit taller my proportions are pretty good oh yeah, yeah, yeah the mass so how I got the proportion for the mass so what I would do is um as I was building it I would take a top-down picture of the mask so I'd, I'd like line it up kind of like this but like a lot better and then I would put that photo into to Photoshop and then I'd load a picture of the actual mask and like overlay it with like some like lower opacity to the layer so you can see through and then I could line up and see like oh that eyebrow is too big or oh his mouth needs to be bigger like the beard isn't big enough into proportion and then I could adjust it. I did that with all the masks. So I could have like fairly decent proportions. Speaking of proportions in general, I, the reason I started with the like Party City mask was like, I needed something that would fit my face. 
and then I'd build everything around that so it looked like it was to size. And so far everything is pretty much to proportion within like millimeters. Um, except the only thing that's like really different is like I think the I think the jewelry I have is a little too big. Oh yeah, I still have to show the second one. Um, and then there's like some area like right here that needs to be like fold out a little bit, but I don't think anyone really would really notice that. Another error I have. Uh, this mask was the first one I made, so like some of it is like kind of gross. This one was the last one I made. So this is the other necklace. I kind of like only a weird. Um, I kind of want to redo the painting around this part, just here. I don't like it. So these tassels were just more of that black yarn. I just dipped them in paint. This was 3D printed, and then to get these like circular parts, I just had um, Mod Podge and poured it out into little dots. So this is just like solid Mod Podge balls. They're like half spheres. This is foam clay. This is foam clay. Uh, this wire right here is for like crafting necklaces. I like Michaels, I got this. Uh, they're just hot glued together on the backs of them, or all these brooch backs, back, so they like stick to the pinwheel correctly and don't like move around. Honestly, other than like touching up the part of that mask, touching up this, touching up those so they don't look bad, attaching the sword to the lantern. God, it's, it's kind of adding up now that I say that, even though I'm almost done. There's still some things that need to be done. Oh yeah, touching on the inside of that mask. Other than all those things, those really small things, the only thing I really need to work on today is I just got my ironing board in the mail and the new like big iron. I've been working with like a really tiny iron and I need to iron the seams of all my fabric. But other than once that's done, I should pretty much be all done and ready for the con. Um, I'm hoping to compete. It's gonna be my second competition. Uh, my first one I did was Doki Dokan. I got Judge's Choice. Um, I don't know if that counts for winning, I, like an awards, because like I know it says if you won like an award before, it puts you in journeyman. But I don't know if Judge's Choice counts as like a place one. I know I put that in my application. Because I applied as novice because that's the only one I've entered. And as part of like the rules that they had for like the categories, I think that's the one that best fits me. But I did say that like I had that award if that counts towards journeyman. I'm okay with honestly wherever they put me. It's just like their rules. So it's their decision. But yeah, I've started working on this. And oh god, I think around the pandemic in the summer, I wanted to make sure I got all the masks done first for this cosplay because I didn't want to start making pinwheel, have all of everything else other than the mask done, and then have the mask look shit. Um, so I just needed to make know that I could make the mask properly before I made everything else because if the mask were shit and everything else was like done. I'd be really sad because it'd be like all this money making something so big and then like the mass look bad it would just ruin the whole cosplay so I wanted to make sure I got those done first and I'm pretty proud of them so far but yeah it's been like two years now working on this um, before I started this I hadn't really done much paper mache if at all Oh, I didn't even talk about um, the paper I use. So for the paper mache, I use um, a big roll of, you can kind of see some of the paper, of um, contractor's paper from, you can get like Lowe's or like maybe Home Depot, I don't know. So yeah, I got like contractor's paper and then it's like, I think like 10, like 10 bucks for a huge roll of it, something like that. And then the mo the expensive part is I'd get wood glue. I think it's like type on three, the green one. Uh, and I would rip up the contractor's paper and then use the wood glue to bond it together. That's all for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe.